Dental radiography on cats can be especially challenging due to the very small area that we have to work with. As you can see here, this sensor, which is identical to a size 2 film, is pretty much filling up the mouth on this very small cat skull. So we're going to start off on this presentation showing some of the easier ways to get uh, some of the teeth and then following in another presentation I'm going to show some special extra oral and near parallel technique. So at any rate we're starting off putting the sensor in the mouth pretty much like a sandwich with the imaging side facing up which means we will here be radiographing teeth in the upper arcade or the maxillary teeth. Because we're going to start off with the cheek teeth, the teeth that are on the side, predominantly molars and premolars and perhaps part of this canine, our point of view is from the front. In order to see the angles of the side teeth, we need to look straight up the nose of the animal. So I've put the camera directly in front of the skull to um, enable us to see the angles of the side teeth. In this particular instance, the approximate angles of these teeth is pretty close to vertical. Uh, that is primarily because we have the cat in what would be referred to as sternal recumbency here. Don't have to. They could be uh, in in a you know as a live animal could be lying on either the right side or the left side, but the angles still apply. So here we have roughly a 90 degree angle between the sensor, which in this case is pretty much horizontal, and the side teeth, which are pretty much vertical, which leaves us a bisecting angle of about halfway. So the easiest way to accomplish this is to take the x-ray cone that we see here, here's our, the end of our cone, and point it directly at the teeth. So we're visualizing this from the front because we're pointing this cone directly at the side teeth. Then we want to point it directly at the sensor. So here we are looking straight at the teeth, straight down at the sensor, and then when we split the difference, we can see pretty much that we are parallel to this angle here. And this might be something that we would see as a result of that. The easy part about this technique is the sensor doesn't have to move. It remains in the mouth. We simply go to the other side. We have pretty much the same angles here. In this case, horizontal sensor, vertical teeth, and a bisect which is right about like so. Pretty much a classic uh, 45 degree bisect. Now, for radiographing the incisors and the canines, the front teeth, which are one of the easier, if not perhaps the easiest shot uh, in the mouth of a cat, we are now, because we're going for the front teeth, we have the camera point of view from the side, so we can see the angles of these teeth pretty much from the side. So there's the approximate angle of the front teeth. The sensor is about like that. So halfway would be something like so. We do the same principle where we point the x-ray directly at the teeth. Then we point straight at the sensor. So here we are looking straight at the teeth, straight at the sensor, and when we split the difference, we can see here that we are pretty much parallel to that bisect. And I know that's the bisect because there's the teeth and there's the sensor. And halfway, we have our cone right in there parallel to that. And we might get something like this as a result of that. Now I have the cat in dorsal recumbency. As you can see, I have a little Play-Doh down here to help hold, uh, hold the skull in place. Obviously, we're not using this um, on real animal, but uh, 
just for purposes of allowing me to demonstrate this. And again, I have the sensor in place pretty much like a sandwich. And the angle of that sensor is about like so. And this tooth is actually close to vertical here and close to horizontal there. The overall angle is a straight line from the apex to the crown. But I like to think of the angle of this as, or these teeth as being roughly like so. So we have the sensor like so and the teeth like that. So we have a very acute angle here, not a whole lot of uh, difference between them. So we can see that we're um, really going to be looking almost parallel. This is a near parallel technique. And again, here you can see where we are pretty much parallel to that. Now, I have a photograph of a live cat. This was supplied to me courtesy of Dr. Ira Luskin at the Animal Dental Training Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, he's a board certified veterinary dentist. And this is a live cat. Here we have the trach tube over here, you can see. And notice that because you can't get the sensor under the tongue, we're shooting straight through the tongue. So this is the same uh, shot as we were just looking at on the skull, um, except that there is a towel that's been put under the cat's head to prop it up a little bit. So in this particular instance, the tooth might be like so. Our sensor is about like that. And so our angle would be something like that. So if we can't see the tube uh, or the cone of the uh, x-ray in place, but if we could, it might be looking something like that. That would probably be pretty close to the angle that that would be shot at. Now, because we're working on a very small subject, and this applies to cats and also uh, very small dogs like uh, toy poodles or chihuahuas, where we want to keep the exposure time at approximately a tenth of a second or slightly higher. We don't want to really go below 0.1 seconds. So if we're too dark at 0.1, we can always put a little bit of distance between the cone and the subject. Two, three, even four inches or more uh, may help to cut the dose down to the animal, but allow us to keep our exposures at approximately a tenth or slightly higher. And what that will do is it'll punch up the contrast of the radiograph. We'll have a much um, more blacker blacks like you see down in here and whiter whites. And as you can see, we have some fairly decent contrast on, uh, on that shot. Again, for the side teeth, pretty much the same. We're close to 90 degrees between the two teeth here being vertical since we're in dorsal recumbency and the sensor being very close to horizontal and that bisect being something like so. And here I've just pulled the cone out a bit in order to allow me to keep my exposure at about 0.1 seconds or higher. Um, but because I put this distance between the cone and the animal, I cut down the dose and therefore I don't overexpose. And this might be a shot that we would see as a result of that. And of course to do the other side we simply switch this over. We don't have to move the subject at all in this particular instance. And again we have teeth close to vertical, uh, approximately horizontal on the sensor, and our bisecting angle would be like so.